Hello everyone. Today we're working on applying dressage training over fences. Our warm-up for this workout included transitions, leg yields, haunches in, and shoulder in exercises. It's important to note that the high summer temperatures restricted the amount of training we could do based on how much I felt comfortable pushing my horse. In retrospect, I should have started our workout much earlier in the morning to give us more time on the flat. But this is one of those things that's really important to know your horse's threshold for work and know how far to push them, when to push them, and when to just let them chill, maybe take a trail ride, maybe cut out half your workout. It's a, it's a matter of balancing what you want to do and what you can do. So the video starts coming out of a shoulder force circle and asking for the canter transition. Another thing that's very important to note is my jumping bit is an elevator, what some people call a three ring, and I use it on the second ring. Now I need this bit for leverage when honey gets heavy on course, but I have to be very careful with it on the flat. It's way too much bit for anything other than on course jumping with fences over 2.6. And I cannot stress enough the importance of knowing your bits. Now even though we're trying to back honey off, I didn't have quite enough pace to fence one, and I didn't necessarily take the best track. Nevertheless, Honey responded to my leg when I asked her to move up, and we had a lovely first jump. Since we were a little off balance, we landed left and had to lift for a lead change before the turn. Now that's a very important thing to note. If you land on the wrong lead, that's okay, but get your lead change before the turn. It's one thing I stress to all my students and it's the one thing that seems to be the common mistake is not realizing you're on the wrong lead or trying to get the lead change for too long. Get your lead change before the turn and if you can't get the lead change before the turn, do a simple change. You can even do a skip change depending on how well your horse is in tune to what you're asking. Now you can see Honey running through my hands down the long side and curling under and that's another thing that's caused by the bit which is why you need to be very aware of how your horse reacts to your bit. As a correction I ask her for a halt and then a back because that's honestly pretty rude to just run through my hands but I want to be soft right in any correction you want to be soft. So I ask her for a halt, soften, back, soften, back, soften, back, soften. Then it's right back to the dressage work before our next jump. Now, I hold her back a little bit too long down the long side. So when we finally turn off the rail to jump the oxer, our distance comes out a little big, but it's balanced. We had to go return to transitions and our dressage work before our next line. So this was an issue of track and rider error. Now the track was pretty much okay, but it was my error. I held her back too much. And this is a balancing act. No one is ever going to be perfect with this in training, right? This is why we train. This is why we do these exercises. This exercise is to back honey off. And it actually worked a little bit too well because I had to ask her to move up for the first jump and then we ended up with a big distance to the second because I was holding her just a little bit too much with my leg. So we know that this is working, we just have to tweak what we're doing in order to make it work for her. So the line walks in an easy three and I'm gonna stop there because it's very important for you if you cannot watch someone ride the lines and even if you can watch someone ride the lines, always show up for your course walk because Someone can tell you a line is three strides, but maybe it's a tight three. Maybe there's something spooky when you turn towards the line, or maybe something is going on at the other end of the arena and you're jumping towards it. Those are all things you're gonna figure out when you walk your course. So this particular line walks in a very easy three. Now I've ridden it before at lower height and it was a very long three. However, today the jumps are about 3.3 three to 3.6, so they're a little bit bigger, meaning we have a little bit less room in between the fences. So we know Honey likes to run through the lines, so a quiet jump in is the only way we're going to make this line work. And that's exactly what she did. She jumped in quiet, 
rock back, which was great. You can see her knees came right up. She's not straining. She had a lovely jump in. Even though the line still got a hair tight, Honey rocked back to jump the oxer. Really nice. She's nice and square and just nice and soft. I don't have to do anything. I stay out of her way, right? Just stay back and help balance her. So now we're gonna return to our purple oxer because that one didn't work out so great the first time around. We have now a more going or allowing stride and it works out just lovely. The oxer just fits right into Honey's stride. It's effortless. It was lovely to ride and it's lovely to watch. Now, as you can see, I like to end every workout by letting my horse stretch out her neck and back. And I like to do this no matter the horse, whether the horse is young or older, they should be able to balance on their own without your hands holding them, right? Without your legs holding them exactly where they need to be. So it's an exercise in, in allowing them to balance on their own, but it's also an exercise in allowing them to stretch those muscles. So just like you do stretching after a workout at the gym or time spent uh, playing soccer or lacrosse or field hockey or whatever sport, tennis, golf, anything you do, you always stretch at the end. So same thing for your horse, okay? Works the exact same way. If you want them to be more comfortable and a little less sore after you ride, then let them stretch out their neck, stretch out the back, and let them tell you when they're calm and they're done and they'll eventually come down to a nice walk when they're good and ready. I hope you learned something from some of my errors in riding and from watching the video. I included the freeze frames this time because it was a little bit of a shorter video and it's always helpful to see, okay, this is the approach and this is the kind of jump. This is the quality of jump that resulted from the approach and all the elements of the approach that we had. So take a look through that, play it in slow motion, really find things on your own, get a feel for things. It was one of the biggest educational tools for me was being able to watch other people ride, whether they were my level, whether they were above my level, even if they were just below my level of riding. It's always, always, always beneficial to watch other people ride. And you can watch the horses, you can watch the riders, listen to the instruction, listen to different instructors, see how they handle situations differently. It's just one of those sports where I think the more you can learn and the more sources of learning you have, the better off you'll be and the more knowledge you'll attain. All right, so best of luck, everyone. I hope you enjoy your summer, whether you're showing or you're training or you're just having fun out at the barn. I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer, and I can't wait for our next video. Have an awesome one.